do not take this seriously and you will probably have some fun with it as soon as you take Kimmy Schmidt versus the Reverend seriously as an episode there's a lot that could be questioned and there are a lot of things that I would say would be quite poor with it but on its own it's pretty creative and as an interactive episode or film certainly it, it engages you I will say that this was released in 2020 and I, I watched Kimmy Schmidt I binge watched it I think about six months ago over the course of about two weeks and I decided to leave some time between that last episode and watching this just to give myself a bit of breathing space and I'm really glad I did that because I can now view this as a separate entity not as a sequel to the TV show and there are a lot of things that I liked about this there were some things that I didn't and I'll be honest the thing that I didn't first of all was the excessive use of Jam the backpack I understand the role she plays in this but I just don't like the character and the interactive element I actually didn't like I don't want to choose this path I want them to tell me what the narrative is but again that's the novelty of it so I can't really say I don't like the fact that I don't like the USP because that's the whole point of it what I did like before I get in with the narrative is that there were times where you could pick the wrong path there are certain options you could choose and if you picked it, a scenario would unfold and then we'd be told, hang on, you've just done a terrible thing. This bad thing has happened. Let's rewind and try again. Obviously, it just means that there are only so many routes we can take to the final destination. Um, as far as I'm aware, there is only one ending to this, but there are various ways to get there. So in this one, and as I said, you have to not take it seriously. It is very, very unrealistic. And unbelievable but it's good fun basically Kimmy finds a book in Jan in her backpack and realizes that it doesn't belong to her or any of the other girls in the bunker any of the other mole women so she talks to the reverend in prison who kind of lets it slip that there's another bunker somewhere and Kimmy makes it her mission to track down that bunker and locate those girls now I'm not going to say anything else that would be even considered to be a, a spoiler until towards the end, then I will discuss a few things that I thought were a little bit far-fetched. But no spoilers until towards the end. So the fact that there's another bunker is certainly interesting. The fact that Kimmy doesn't immediately go to the police and say, hey, he's just confessed that there are more women held captive and in grave danger, a little bit questionable. But I was curious to find out what would happen with that and if there were if, they, if Kimmy would actually find another bunker. Um, she does go along with Titus, primarily, to locate the bunker. Titus does a lot of complaining, and I think he's brilliant. I just, I love Titus as a character. Um, I think Titus Burgess is brilliant with this role, and he just oozes Titus. Now, at this point, he's got a pretty successful career as an actor, with Jacqueline as his agent, that partnership works really well, and I was really pleased that Jacqueline would be kept in this. I love Jane Krakowski. So I was really pleased to see that she was in this. The same with Carol Kane, who of course plays Lillian. Um, I love her. I, th I think she's amazing, and again, for me, it was important that she was in this. We do have Daniel Radcliffe, who I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of Daniel Radcliffe. The character he plays is a bit of an idiot, but he also plays an English prince, um, to whom Kimmy is imminently getting married. The way their relationship is represented is pretty quaint, pretty peculiar, and pretty unique. Um, what you know, it's actually one thing in this that I truly adored, and it's I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, but Prince Frederick Daniel Radcliffe said, "Do you remember how we met?" And then he jumped into this little anecdote about how they met, obviously for the benefit of the audience because we didn't know this and then at the end of his little anecdote Kimmy just turns to him and says I know how we met Frederick and I love that little bit of self-awareness because there are so many times when films characters have to say oh do you remember when such and such happened for the benefit of the audience when clearly the other character would have remembered that and I just love that I thought it was um, a brief little line that really really made me enjoy this a lot more because it made me aware that it was self-aware from very early on 
in terms of the characters that are included in this, I'm still longing for Dong. You know, I feel like the character was underplayed at the end of the last season. Doesn't feature here. Granted, not sure how he would have fit into the narrative, but I feel like there's more for that character that we just don't have enough of. I, I miss him. I really miss him. John Hamm as Richard Wayne, Gary Wayne, obviously um, fantastic. Um, Van Fife being back in this made me really happy. Buckley, how old is Buckley now? Cannot, cannot quite understand that. Um, there are a lot of fun little things in this. The editing was, of course, very fun. The interactive element. It was fine. You know, I, I didn't feel like it pulled me out of the episode too much. Um, but I would have preferred it if it was just a one-off special um, feature length. It's apparently got a runtime of 80 minutes. But of course, a lot of that is going to be pretend, pretend, I'm losing my mind, depend on how many um, clips you choose. There are, for the most part, you get to choose the story um, between two options. So I think there was one where there were four options. And at least one of the options was defunct, so you'd click on it, you'd watch the clip, you'd be told, hey, that's a terrible idea, let's try again. And I think the next one that I selected took me forward. So there are a few clips in this that I probably haven't seen. Which works to the film's benefit because it makes you want to kind of go back and check out the clips that you haven't watched. Um, which I'd be very interested to do, particularly if it's a Jane Krakowski or Carol Kane clip. Uh, I don't actually think they work. Oh, Jack McBrayer. He's in it. It's Sandy Parcell. Um... Oh, is he related to Kenneth Parcell? Obviously both being Tina Fey. I wonder if they just decided to call him Parcell for the fun of it. Or has Kenneth ever mentioned having like an Uncle Sandy or anything? If you are fully immersed in the Tina Fey universe and can confirm if the Parcells are connected, do let me know. It's a bit too much of a coincidence for that to be the case. Um, but I do love my prayer. I think he's fantastic. So in all, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad that I waited until quite some time after the ending of the first uh, of the final episode. I will also say the very I'm not going to say how this ends, but I will say the last frame had me going in right up close to the screen and and watching, really closely watching the main cast members to see if they blinked and to see if they moved. I can't say any more than that without spoiling it, but I found it really engaging and. A really simple way of keeping you hooked it's good fun do not take it seriously i do not consider it well i suppose i have to consider it part of the main narrative because if they ever have a sequel after this which i don't think they will it's kind of important to know what's happened on this little journey and there are some important life events for kimmy but at the same time it doesn't affect my opinion of the main series Kimmy versus the Reverend, completely unrealistic. Oh yes, spoilers, a brief spoiler. The Reverend has been in prison for five years, and he points this out himself, as I think does Kimmy. The mole women in the other bunker, the new bunker, have been there for five years. Pretty sure they'd be dead by now. So that, I thought, was a little bit... Like, most of this I can understand as being unrealistic, but for me that was just one step too far. I don't know how they could explain that very well. But I think that was the biggest issue I had with this. The rest of it was pretty great. As long as you don't take it seriously, I think you will genuinely... Oh, and also, yes, you have to have watched the TV series first. Don't watch this as your introduction to Kimmy Schmidt, or you will probably never get round to watching the TV series. But as a follow-on, pretty good fun. 